Hi everyone, so in our tutorials Matteo asked me if I would go through the setup for Ambisonics in Pro Tools. So the first thing that I wanted to show you is on the Greenwich uh, Sound Designers Facebook page you'll know that I've posted up loads of stuff. Uh, one of the things that I posted was this link to Spatial Audio and Ambisonics freeware tools. So if you click on this link you will find an incredible list to loads of different plugins uh, and things which you can access. Now most of these are VSTs which means that if you're using Reaper or another uh, program that is hosting uh, able to host VSTs then you can load up any of these and there's a whole range of different things for you to play with. If you're using Pro Tools, then uh, there are some different options that are available. So one of the ones from this list is the Spatial Workstation, which is available from Facebook 360. So you can download that and uh, install it. There's also the Rode plugin, uh, which comes with the uh, microphone that we have, the NTSF1 microphone. Um, but can also be used, you can see here, you can set the input that's coming into it. So uh, as you'll see later, we can stick it on a channel and you can choose the outputs as well, how things are routing out. So that's one option. And another one that is really great that I really recommend is Blue Ripple. So Blue Ripple are a, a company that uh, create uh, Amazonic plugins and they have lots of different ones that you can buy but this OA3 core set is free so uh, yes and it's free so you can download in a range of different formats here uh, and load things up and you can see it's got a whole range of things so it's got um, different types of panners, uh, stereo panners, 8 channel panners, uh, it's got decoders uh, to mono, stereo and 5.1 um, converts between things. Be the Beamer will separate a mono sound out of an ambisonic field so it's like a flashlight you can kind of move the torch around and scan in on individual things and all of the details of the individual plugins are available on this plugin list so you can look down and see this in detail. Um, so grab these, uh, download them and install them. So for example, I'm just going to very quickly install these uh, Facebook plugins here. Um, and then obviously, as with every plugin, once you've got these installed, they will end up appearing on your uh, workstation in Pro Tools. Cool. So there we go. My Facebook uh, install was successful. So yes, those you'll find the link to those up on the uh, Greenwich Sound Designers page. And I will also post this link uh, when I post this video. So let's launch Pro Tools. So I have a slightly different version of Pro Tools to the one that you may be running. I'm running version 11, I think, but I don't think that, the, oh no, 12.8. So my version's not too much older than um, than the one that you will be running on. So there are a number of things that we need to do in order to set up our system. I'm gonna create a new, uh, a new session and yeah, let's do it, 48, 24 bit. Um, Okay, great. So the, uh, let's get rid of this task manager window. So uh, when you come to track new, uh, for those of you, you need to be using the Pro Tools HD or the Pro Tools Ultimate version. And then when you come, you will see the whole range of different possibilities for uh, kinds of tracks that you can uh, create. So um, you can create these tracks here and you can combine different ones so I'm also going to create uh, uh, just a first order track as well. Now you see when I created my third order track it automatically came up with a third order bus but when I created my first order track it comes up with no output so I'm going to just label these so that you are clear which one is which. So 
This is because I'd already set up a track within the bus menu. So what do I mean by that? You probably will have seen up in the I.O. menu before. You probably will have looked at this. Uh, you've got your outputs um, and you will have remembered, you know, that we've gone here before and we've set up our system outputs before. Uh, you can also this is where you can route the inputs from the physical inputs on your uh, on your interface to the uh, software. But what we're really interested here is this bus. Now, the things that are listed here in this bus menu are the things that appear when we come up uh, to our bus menu, right? So you see these things, bus 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, all of these things are listed here in this bus menu. Uh, menu. So everything that's in the session here needs to be uh, equivalent here. So you'll notice that some of these are routed to outputs. So for example, my 5.1 is currently routed to the stereo output, but I can also route it to the 5.1 output. Um, and likewise, I've got here a third order ambisonic output, which is automatically being downmixed by Pro Tools. So Pro Tools does do a down mixing for you. But what I want to do is I want to have control over it and be able to place my own um, decoding onto the, uh, the output. So I have created my own third order ambisonic bus. Now, like I said earlier, this was already set up, but I do need to set up one for the first order. So let's use this as an example. And it doesn't matter which order you're using, uh, it is exactly the same. So I will create my first order ambisonic bus. Now, if I tick this box here, this enables the mapping to output. So as soon as anything is ticked here, this means that it will be routed to the outputs. But actually, because of what we're going to do in a moment, we don't actually want to route this to the output right now. So I'm just going to leave it here as a bus. And when I come here to this bus menu, now you see here we've got all our other things here, but we do now have the first order ambisonics. So now we have the possibility of routing these things out. Now the handy thing of keeping these in buses is that we can create auxiliary channels which act as a kind of master output. And I like doing this because then you have uh, the control. So, so essentially I will have everything in this first order and everything that goes into the first order ambisonic bus, I want it to come to this final output bus here. Now at the moment it's the same thing being routed to, which is obviously crazy, so don't worry about that. So what I'm going to do here, in order for monitoring, I'm going to open up a plugin here and I'm going to come down to my list and I'm going to choose Soundfield by Rode First Order Ambisonics to Stereo, right? Because we want to be able to listen on our either our speakers or our headphones. Now, you see, as soon as I added this plugin, it changed the outputs and it's changed it to no outputs. But I can now go to my stereo output. So everything that's played through this first order ambisonics track is routed into this first order ambisonic bus which is then sent to this first order bus output that's then going through the rotor plug-in here and it's being decoded to stereo now if i'm working with speakers then i can set the uh, microphone the road pattern to uh, frontal but if i'm listening on headphones then i can switch the uh, decoding to 180 degrees so it's the equivalent of um, what's happening what yeah basically you know what are my speakers in front of me or are they either side of my head so i choose my uh, decoding pattern based on what i'm doing and i make sure to change the uh, input setting from the microphone setting to Ambix, B format Ambix. So this will make sure that it decodes because I think with the microphone, it does some fancy magic, which uh, we don't need it to do here. So as I say, if you're working on speakers, have the, the monitoring set 
uh, in front of you. If you are working on headphones, then set it side to side. And so now anything that you play back will come out and decode to stereo. So this is the same kind of process, whether you're working at first order or third order. Let's just do it again for the third order setup so that you can see. So I'm going to create a third order Ambisonics auxiliary track. Here we go. Third order Ambisonics bus out. I'm going to set the input to it to be that. I'm going to come to the multi-channel plugins and you see I am going to select, uh, I've got a whole range of different decoders here. I'm going to choose, they have an automatic one for headphones. So uh, this now creates a, uh, this hasn't for some reason changed the default setting here, but it knows that it can't route to that anymore. So I will change this to main stereo. And now I have my binaural headphone decoding set up for that. So working with these buses down here, I can have as many ambisonic tracks up the top as possible playing with sound. So long as they're routing into those buses, then the bus will do the decoding and I don't have to decode every single level. Obviously you can set up multiple buses. So you could have third or ambisonic bus one, two, three, four, if you have different types of sounds that you want to send through things. Um, it's entirely up to you, but I hope that this uh, has given you a brief introduction uh, to using Ambisonics in uh, Pro Tools. And uh, if you have any other questions, then uh, please just let me know. Enjoy.